Imagine that this is a getting out of bed neuron, so it works by releasing little packets of glutamate in the synapse here, which excites the next neuron. This neuron is also stimulated by glutamate through synapses on the myriads of tiny spines on its dendritic tree. So, okay, so the next player in this are the interneurons. These guys also have a dendritic tree with synapses like this, and these are glutamatergic too. Interneurons come in lots of different si types, uh, which project to all different sites, so to the spines, the dendrites, the cell body. And one type of interneuron is called chandelier cells, which synapse onto the first part of the axon, just as it's coming out of the neuron here. And these lines of synapses look like candles. Okay, now a key function of interneurons is that they're inhibitory. And to do this, they use the transmitter GABA. So what you can see is that by synapsing just here, this type of interneuron is in a perfect place to act as a veto. So however much you're working to try and get yourself out of bed using these guys, if this guy says no, then you're not going anywhere. So how does ketamine work? Well, it blocks the NMDA receptors that glutamate binds to. So if it does that just here, then it's going to reduce the firing of this interneuron and reduce its veto here. So, hey presto, the break is off and the getting out of bed neuron will fire and we'll see a glutamate surge just here, which is in fact just what we see with ketamine. So this is just a theory, and these aren't the only glutamate receptors, and a lot could depend on the dose. So perhaps a higher dose will shut off these other inputs too, and send you to sleep, which is why ketamine's an anaesthetic. So that's the disinhibition of a hypothesis. The reason I like it is it parallels the stories that patients tell me. They say, I can just think more freely, things seem to flow better, and I just seem to be able to do things without a battle. I don't have to fight myself. I like that.